Hey everybody, welcome back. For those of you who are new, let me get you caught up. I am working on a K1 attack kit car. And what I've chosen to do is I'm making it electric. So I got a Tesla motor. I figured that motor would be the best suited for this car style and the performance I was looking for. So that came a few months ago and the uh, suspension actually came separate. So when that finally came, I uh, started work on it. Uh, so I assembled the suspension, got it all uh, mounted to the Tesla subframe. Then I went on to look to how best to fit the Tesla subframe onto the existing K1 attack frame. So I went through a couple iterations, uh, did a few analyses from there, I started chopping up the frame, welding on the new uh, structure that I had designed, and then a very big milestone. We actually got the motor mounted to the car, took away the support, and cleaned up the frame, painted it, then we're ready to move on. So worked on some cooling that would go for the motor, um, got it all sorted out, got the fans and thermostat all working just right. So everything was looking great. Um, that's when I figured out that the uh, Tesla motor controller that I got actually controlled the fan. So I started working on the Tesla motor controller, got all the wires working, actually got it so that uh, I could have it uh, do the brake lights. What it really needed was the high voltage. So I got the batteries. I chose the LG Chem lithium ion batteries and from there kind of went to designing where I felt like they should go and then I started wiring and wiring and more wiring so there's a lot of uh, the BMS wiring essentially the uh, battery management system monitoring all of the cell voltages the temperature readings so I got those wires run for the front pack I uh, got the batteries mounted in the rear now that you're all caught up let's continue all right, so I think where I'm going to start is the space kind of between these two batteries, again, behind the uh, firewall and in front of the battery box. Um, I'm going to put, I think, my high voltage stuff I'm going to try and build uh, in there if I can. So that's where we'll try and bring the, uh, essentially, the uh, big orange cables in to try and live there. My thought is um, I'm going to take these two battery modules and then the four up front and that'll be kind of one pack and I'll have these four in the back and those two be the other pack and again I'll hopefully have everything kind of live right in there. So I will start uh, measuring and cutting cables and putting connectors on. Go from there. All right, so I'll just kind of describe how this goes, but um, I'll have kind of the zero voltage or negative, whatever you want to call it, going to the front battery pack and essentially going through module one, two, three, four, positives coming out from four, and it's essentially coming down here to the negative. I'll call that one module five, and then from five up to six, and then six will go into the high voltage box that'll live behind here. And then on the back, I still need to do this, but again, the ground or lowest voltage will go from there to there, and then it'll be one, two, three, four, going over to there, five, six, and then over to there. So that's the plan. I'll, I'll start cutting all the orange cables and getting everything set.
All right, so I have these kind of laid out how they'll be in the rear battery box. Um, what I'm looking at is I just need to go from here to here, which seems great because it's not a big distance, but it's actually um, short enough that I can't get, uh, you know, the standard connector back to back with a cable in the middle. So I'd have to like do this huge loop or I could go like from here to there and kind of like do leapfrog batteries or something. Or I think what I'm going to try is just a bus bar. So just get a little strip of copper and try that. So that's what we'll do. All right, I got a good chunk of copper here to make a bus bar. So yeah, um, I don't know if we'll get to that this week. Got a lot of wiring going, but essentially I'm just going to do kind of right here, just drill a hole and drill another hole from one to the next, boom. So. That'll be that. All right, so the BMS system that I'm using is the Dilithium Design uh, BMS. And essentially, they've got these uh, linear technology uh, boards, uh, monitoring boards for the battery cells. And each of these boards can handle up to 12 cells. And each BMS has uh, two of these. So you got essentially up to 24 cells you can read with one BMS. Now this one's called the Master, and they also have satellite, so you can have satellites downstream. So you can have up to three satellites and one BMS, so <clears throat> one Master. So you can have up to 96 cell readings, um, kind of for one, I'll call it one BMS system. So that's kind of the, the architecture, um, the connections, essentially you got it just wants your cell voltage, so kind of your ground, and then it measures just in between each one. So from the ground to your first cell voltage, and then it takes that one to that one, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of how it looks. It's also got, um, I'll show you, it's got a port, serial port to connect to the computer, so you can kind of talk and interface, and um, you can find out cell voltages. Um, it's also got, the uh, thermistor readouts. So again, this is kind of the sort of readout that you'll get if you type in various commands. You can find out all your cell voltages and it'll detect packs if packs have been disconnected. It's got high voltage cutoff. So if you're charging, um, it's got a loop. Um, I'll show you when I get there, but high voltage and low voltage cutoff cell balancing, it's got the thermistors as I mentioned so you can get a uh, readout from your various uh, battery modules. So it, it itself takes 12 volts, um, so that's your serial port and then these are the communication from the master uh, to the satellite and then again you can essentially send that one to the next satellite. So again you got your CAN high and low and this is your loop, so uh, it's normally closed if everything's good. If it's not good, it's it's open, so you can send that to a, or send that signal to a buzzer, alarm, uh, to your charging uh, unit. So anyway, um, I need to get things wired. Got a lot of wiring to do, so I don't know that we'll actually get to the part of plugging them in, but I uh, just want to give a brief uh, walkthrough of the system. Okay, so here's what I'm dealing with. The BMS has essentially 12 monitoring wires on one of these guys, and each BMS can have up to two of these, so it can have up to 24. And so four BMS units gets you up to the 96 for kind of one parallel pack. The challenge is each um, battery module has 16 cells so yeah so and, and the other thing is the half the monitoring wires are on one side and half are on the other so what I got to do it kind of anyways it's not the worst in the world but basically the, the top wires are like even the bottom are odd and so the even ones end up going to one the odd ones end up going to the other but again it only has 12 so then I got to kind of break into the next set 
and go there and so half of this set will go to one battery module and then it'll start on the next one and then anyway so there yeah when I get this all wired up I will do a lot of continuity checks and make sure I got all my numbers everything wired correctly All right, this is how it works out. We've got essentially two plugs for each battery module. So there's one battery module, two, and three. And then one plug for each BMS. So basically there's 12 leads here, 16 leads here, 12 leads there. So again, some of those go there, some of those go there. So anyways, four of those gives you 48 and three of those give you 48. And then I've got, those are the thermistors right there. So I'll see if I can bundle all these up somewhat tidy. All right, got them all cleaned up. So again, there's one set for one module, module two, module three. And then we go up here and we've got kind of BMS one, two, three, and four. All right, I got the, uh, this is all for one pack. So, Got one, two, three, four, five, six battery modules. And then up here, got eight of the, uh, essentially the BMS connections. So all those, some of those are just extra thermistors. The others I've got to actually, each uh, BMS set wants to know kind of the ground condition or the low voltage condition of that of that uh, connector. So I gotta essentially join or solder that wire to the lowest one. So the first one is just easy. I just get to pick up like the low cell voltage, but then, so wire 12, wire 16, or sorry, wire 13, that was the next set. And I gotta jump essentially the black wire there to wire 12, the positive wire 12 there. And then I gotta do that all the way across. So gotta do that a couple times. And like I said, this will be kind of for battery pack two, which is the rear one and combined with the passenger. And then battery pack one, I got kind of all the uh, plug side for at least four of the batteries up front. So I just gotta do two for the behind the driver. And then I gotta do essentially join them all. So those wires were a lot longer. So I had to just run a whole bunch of wires. So I got, was it 64? I can't remember, but I think 64 wires um, coming from the front. And then I gotta do one more here, or uh, sorry, one more, two more battery modules, and then gotta tile, tile those up. And I'll have to kind of do that in the car, I think. All right, that's all the time we have for this week. I think we were able to get the uh, BMS wires mostly sorted out. Uh, got a few more to go, and hopefully we'll get this motor running soon. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing. See you next week.